Your Honors. Now, following the uh, JNA's departure on the 19th of May, 1992, from Bosnia, the war continued for another 15 months before General Perisic became chief of the VJ General Staff. The war was a ferocious and unforgiving war, and in that period of time, the VRS and the VJ participated in joint military operations in the Podrinia region and elsewhere in Bosnia. The objectives of the military campaign in Podrinia can be seen in Directive 4 that was issued by General Mladic on the 19th of November 1992, and in particular in his instructions to the Drina Corps. Now, the Drina Corps, as your honors are aware, is the corps that in 1995 was responsible for the atrocities that were committed in Srebrenica. But if we could go to uh, P866, we can see Directive 4 that was issued by General Mladic. Uh, and it was issued uh, to various corps. I have isolated the particular section that deals with the Drina Corps. And his orders to the Drina Corps were as follows, and I'll read in part what those orders were. From its present position, its main forces shall persistently defend Visegrad, the dam, Zvornik, and the corridor, while the rest of the forces in the wider Podrinia region shall exhaust the enemy, inflict the heaviest possible losses on him, and force him to leave the Birach, Jepa, and Garajda areas together with the Muslim population. Now, the VJ's participation in that operation was publicly denied. We have submitted to your honors a series of exhibits, uh, which are exhibits from the Uzici Corps, VJ Corps that was participating in the operations in the Podrinia region. If we could go to one of those, which is I show your honors as an exemplar, it's P2162. And this is an exhibit that was uh, a document. It was a uh, to the command of the Drina Corps, issued by the commander of the Uzici Corps, that was General Odanich. Now, General Odanich is someone who has been convicted in this institution. Uh, Your Honor, you can see from this particular document that uh, if we go to a, a portion of it, this is pursuant to the orders of the general staff of the Yugoslav army. He then gives his his orders, uh, or his, he, he then describes what his forces, the VJ forces, have been doing in the area where they're operating. And you can see from this document, your honors, that they have been engaged in combat operations. What is the date of this document, sorry? This is the 27th of January, 1993. So, and as I say, Your Honors, this is at a time when the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia was denying any involvement in the events in Bosnia. This document illustrates they, in conjunction with the Drina Corps, were engaged in combat operations directed at Muslim villages. And you'll see that, Your Honor, in subpart three. And you'll see that in a, another part of this document where there is a direction to carry out an attack against various portions uh, within the area of responsibility. Uh, 
Now, while you're talking about this, yes. I, I'm tempted to ask you a question which I was reserving for the end of your argument. And my question is, what is the authority for the proposition that being jointly involved in combat makes the one party guilty of crimes that are committed during that combat. Are, are you referring to the period before General Perisic becomes the chief of the general staff? No, it's, it has nothing to do with the period. It's just got to do with the proposition, the, the legal proposition. <coughs> Your Honor, first of all, at this period of time, we have not charged any crimes I in the Virginia I region. I what we're saying is that these two forces operated together in pursuit of a common objective. Mm -hmm. The common objective was to the Drina Corps and the participation of the Uzici Corps was to remove the Muslim population. So we say they acted jointly. Okay, then I'll ask you the same question at the end of your argument. Well, Carol. if I haven't answered the question, I'd like to try to do so, Your Honor. So let me, let me try again. This is evidence that of the Uzici Corps participation. It is evidence, one, that the forces of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, the military forces, adhered to the strategic objectives of the Bosnian Serbs. They were providing aid to them in the period before General Perisic became chief of the general staff. That aid was both in terms of armaments and it was in terms of military forces engaged in the ethnic cleansing operations. Our position is, Your Honor, that that, propos that, that, that assistance did not change throughout the, 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 that is, the pursuit of those strategic objectives did not change during General Perisic's tenure as chief of the general staff, that there were operations with uh, the v with joint, opera joint military operations in pursuit of the strategic objectives while General Perisic was chief of the general staff. So the relevance of the Uzici Corps document is it shows a continuation of the policies that persisted in and through General Perisic's tenure as chief of the general staff. Let, let me try again. The, on reading the indictment, Uh, the kind of crimes that I see the accused charged with are crimes of murder, persecutions, and what have you, which are, he's not charged, for instance, with uh, driving the Muslims out of the area and making the, 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 the corridor clean. He's charged with actual murders and other things that are, killed, that are committed during that. My question really is, and, and it is a question that relates to the indictment, even though I'm asking it at a time when you are talking about issues that are still outside the period of the indictment. My question is, what is the authority for, for the proposition that if an army assists another army in war and crimes are committed of the nature that are charged in this indictment that the assisting army or the commander of the assisting army is guilty of aiding and abetting those crimes. General Perisic provided assistance knowing that that assistance was going to assist the VRS, and it was likely that that assistance would be used in the commission of crimes. Okay. Let me paint you an analogous scenario and get your comment on it. The war began in Afghanistan in 2001, and it is generally known that there are allegations of crime having been committed at least since 2002 to date. Does that make 
the commanders of the various NATO uh, armies that are jointly participating in that war guilty of the crimes that have been that are alleged to have been committed and are still being committed, like detentions in Guantanamo, in in uh, Berham, in uh, Kabul, and all these places. Your Honor, you're asking me, obviously, an explosive political question. No, no, it's a legal question. But I want to answer it's your question. It's a legal question. I want to ask, and I would like to answer your question. Yeah. The objectives, as I understand, of the NATO forces isn't to ethnically cleanse parts of Afghanistan. It is to, it is to be engaged in a military campaign against the Taliban. Mr. In, Mr. Mr. Perisic is not charged with cleansing. Ethnically cleansing. I, Your Honor, he is He's char charged with murders. That's why I say I'm making the distinction between the actual crimes that are charged in the indictment. He's charged with murders, persecutions, and what have you. He's not charged with ethnic cleansing. Your Honor, he's charged in count uh, in respect of uh, the crimes in Srebrenica. He is charged with a inflicting inhumane acts, one of which is the forcible transfer of the population from Srebrenica. That is, at, in our view, in our sub respectful submission, mm -hmm. forcibly transferring 25 to 35,000 people out of an area where they were living is ethnic cleansing. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I, I concede that, but still, my question still stands. My question still stands that uh, how what, what is the authority for that proposition? And I'm saying, can you comment on the, on the analogy that I've drawn? Because all the other commanders of the NATO uh, nations that are involved in Afghanistan are aware of the kind of crimes that have been committed there and are still continuing with that war. It's not a political question. It's, it's, it's an analogous situation okay. to this one. I, I draw the distinction, as I say, as follows, Your Honor. The first situation is it's a war. It's a war in Bosnia, and it was a war, and it is an ongoing war in Afghanistan. Yeah. Where I make my distinction is the purpose and objectives. The objectives of the Bosnian Serbs in part from strategic objective number one, was to ethnically cleanse, if you will, that's a, a gross, I mean a much broader term, it, is, it was to separate the Serbs from the non-Serbs. Mm -hmm. that, that act gave rise to conduct, long-standing conduct that lasted throughout the war of the VRS taking populations of Muslims and Croats and removing them from their homes by force. That was no mystery. General Perisic was aware, as we say in our brief, was fully aware of the conduct of the Bosnian Serbs. And with the knowledge of that conduct, he provided them with assistance that enabled them to continue to conduct the war, continue to con commit crimes, and that assistance that he provided had a substantial effect on the commission of those crimes. So I make a distinction between the Afghan war, where there is not the stated purpose, which is to, re to remove and ethnically cleanse. I also make one other observation about the Afghan war. In the Afghan war, and I'll take the United States as an example, because I'm familiar with the United States' participation in part in that. When there were crimes that were committed by American soldiers, those crimes were prosecuted in the United States. And people are serving life prison sentences as a result of those crimes committed against Afghan civilians. In this situation, there were no prosecutions whatsoever, either in the VRS or in the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia for war crimes. There are some people who are not being prosecuted in the United States. There, there may well be, Your and, Honor. Uh, and what, what I'm saying here is, okay, I hear what you say on, on the forcible transfer, but all I'm saying is that there are also other char uh, crimes charged against the accused in this case, which uh, like the murders, you know, um, which were 
committed in combat or while they were there. And these are similar crimes as the crimes that are being committed in, uh, in the Afghan, Af Af Afghanistan war. There are, there are deaths that were committed in combat, both in Afghanistan and in Bosnia. The crimes that we charge are not combat deaths. They're, co they're deaths of civilians purposefully Sure. Committed. Mm -hmm. So in Afghanistan, for example. The, the, the detentions are not combat uh, crimes. These are the detentions that have been made after people have been captured, some of them away from the, from the theater of war. We are not charging General Parasich with detentions. No, I understand that. We're charging General Parasich with murder, which is the likely consequence of providing aid to a military machine whose objective is to forcibly separate the ethnic populations. Okay. It was foreseeable, Your Honor, and General Parasich's assistance makes him guilty of the foreseeable consequences of that assistance, which includes murder, which includes the wounding of civilians, uh, it includes the forcible transfer of civilians. So that's how we make. You see, you see uh, unfortunately, we, we don't seem to be on the same wavelength. Um, the detentions that I'm referring to in the in the Afghan. How do you pronounce this word? Afga Afghanistani war. Uh, I know that General Persich is not charged with such things, but they are the type of crime, like the murders that he's charged with, that are committed away from the theater of war, not in combat. And, and I, but still, they are crimes. They are war crimes, or they are crimes against humanity. And, uh, but the point I'm asking simply is, because the armies, the commanders of the remaining United NATO countries that are participating in Afghanistan are aware of the fact that crimes have been committed. Crimes against humanity have been committed. And yet those commanders are still continuing to participate in that war. Are they then guilty? of those crimes that are being committed. That's it's just, you either say they are not guilty or they are guilty. If anybody is guilty of those crimes, then they are equally guilty with those people of those crimes. Because they are aware of those crimes being committed. And yet, they are continuing to participate in that war. I draw a distinction, Your Honor, between continuing to participate in the war the position that we assert here is identical to the situation in your hypothetical situation. Yeah, it's identical, you're right. I, that's what I, yes, I don't resile from that, Your Honor. And, and therefore, if it is identical, then you are saying, yes, they ought to be guilty if anybody else is guilty. Your Honor, I, I, I don't want to go that far. I'm saying that the, the, the situation is identical in okay. terms of the, the framework of the, our case. Okay. I won't force you to go any further. Thank any you. Further than that. Thank you for not going for, for your answers. Thank you, Your Honor. You see, I believe we were at the Uzici Court document, and uh, what? what, what is, I come back to this document just for a minute, Your Honor. What I want to say about this document is that the, the VJ's participation in this campaign really demonstrates the political decision to support the Bosnian Serbs. Uh, if we look at the map of Bosnia, the ethnic map of Bosnia, after the Podrinja campaign, um, months after this statement, this document I've shown you from General Odanić, it looked considerably different. It looked different because Muslims in the Podrinja area were forced out of their homes and into a small geographic region in and around Srebrenica. Uh, 
in that location, tens of thousands of Bosnian Muslims were facing a humanitarian disaster. And it was a disaster that was only thwarted by the UN intervention or the intervention of the international community. Had that intervention not occurred, those people who had been forced in that region uh, would have been forcibly transferred out of it. Many of them would have been killed. What's important, Your Honor, to recognize is that the creation of the Srebrenica enclave frustrated the fulfillment of strategic objective number one, the separation of the Muslims from the other ethnic groups, because sitting in the bosom of the Republic of Srpska was a enclave that was filled with tens of thousands of Muslims. The creation of the enclave did not in any way diminish the desire of the Bosnian Serbs to complete their goal. And in fact, the days of reckoning for those people who were living within the enclave were to come in July of 1995 with the crimes that we have described in our indictment. Now, General Perisic came to his position as chief of the VJ general staff in August of 1993. He came at a critical phase of the war in Bosnia because the VRS was confronted with two acute problems that put at risk the VRS's ability to prosecute the war and impeded their ability to achieve their strategic objectives. The first problem was that a large number of active military personnel in the VRS were abandoning their units without permission of the VRS and were being accepted into the VJ. This was quite damaging to the VRS because it threatened their ability to maintain combat readiness of the units in the VRS. Now, I won't make any submissions on this. Ms. McKenna will be discussing this with your honors uh, shortly. But I will discuss the second acute problem that was facing the VRS, and that was that after 15 months of constant warfare, the VRS had exhausted its material reserves. Without ammunition, without war material, the VRS would cease to become an effective military force, and its strategic objectives would be unobtainable. Now, we had some evidence in this case. I think it was Mr. Kovacevic who said to your honors that the VRS had no problems with its ammunition stocks in 1993. We take issue with his testimony. And I'd like to show you a series of documents that we uh, presented. If we go first to Prosecution Exhibit 2915, 2915, your honor, is a document that was is dated the 18th of July, 1993. This is approximately five weeks before General Perisic became chief of the VJ general staff. And it's on the screen before you. You can see what it is. It is a document from the VRS main staff. It's dated the 18th of July, and it's entitled Replenishment Need of the Army of the Republic of Srpska. It is submitted directly to General Perisic's predecessor, General Ponich. And in this document, uh, I believe this document was signed by Gen uh, General Milovanovic, who was the second in command of the VRS. General Milovanovic says the following. He says, during the past six months, the last six months, the Army of Republic of Srpska has been engaged in continuous combat activities aimed at the liberation of ancient territory of the Serbian people. In that combat, we suffered a huge number of casualties and 
we and have also spent huge quantities of material means which we cannot replenish from our own resources. And if you look down on that document, you'll see then there is a request for to General uh, Panich that the VJ provide the VJ provide large quantities of material. I think there's approximately a million two hundred thousand rounds of 7.65 millimeter ammunition in just the first three items. Uh, now, if we take a look at the next document, P2917, uh, this is uh, nine days before General Perisic became chief of the VJ general staff. And this is a, a document that is uh, from, this is, this is from General Mladic's notebook, and it records a meeting of the inner circle of the VRS main staff. In other words, they're talking privately amongst themselves. And the agenda, the first item on the agenda is the situation in the army of RS, problems and how to solve them. And if we go down into this document, you'll see that one of the participants, uh, General Miljanovic, is recorded as saying, material reserves have been exhausted. If we go to yet another document, Your Honor, this is after General Perisic has become chief of the VJ general staff. This is Prosecution Exhibit 2918. Uh, this is a document that was addressed to the government of the Republic of Srpska. It is dated 1 November 1993. It is from General Mladic. And if we go into this, it's a top secret. It's classified top secret. If we go into this document, which is entitled Problems of Logistics Support for the Army, uh, you'll see that General Mladic says to the government of the Republic of Srpska, the material reserves of the army is the main source of supply from the beginning of the war until the present have been exhausted. He goes on to say, 148 types of ammunition, 35% of these, the reserves of military and PA ammunition is zero. If we turn to the next document I'd like to show your honors, it's P2766. This is a document, your honor, that is dated the 15th of May, 1994. It's authored by President Karadich, and it's sent personally to General Perisic. The document says to General Perisic, I am compelled to inform you about the dangerous developments in the military situation here. He goes on to say, our army is exhausted and stretched out over a long front line. This too could be overcome, however, but the shortage of every type of ammunition cannot be overcome but through the provision of ammunition. Finally, Your Honors, if we could take a look at P149, which is a document, an internal document. It's an analysis of the combat readiness of the activities of the VRS in 1992. It was stated in April, but it retrospectively looks back at the situation of the Army in 1992. And in that particular document, it says, Reserves of material resources, starting with those of significance for troops, are exhausted. It goes on to say that material needs for the successful combat operation in the territory are being met from the existing reserves and by relying on the FRY Army. The material base is insufficient and its characteristics are 
one of the bullet points says material reserves have been exhausted and their present levels are critical. There are no imports except from the fry. So, Your Honors, when Parasich became chief of the VJ general staff, the VRS was in crisis. Parasich, general Parasich appreciated that grave risk that confronted the VRS. And months after, he appreciated it and he expressed the problem many months later, but the quotation and his appreciation is reflected in the particular quotation that, I'm, that he made at the 21st session of the SDS, uh, SDC on the 7th of June, 1994. This is P766. What he said was the following. Both presidents know that their, their positions is such that they can no longer wage war without our help. If we stop helping them in the area of education, financing of educated personnel, and material assistance for certain combat operations, they'll start losing territories. If they lose territories, combat morale will gradually decline, and the enemy will achieve its goal. If the enemy achieves this goal, everything we've done so far will have been futile. And besides, we can't stop the war from spreading to this territory. This means we have to help somehow. Now, the desperate situation that was confronting the VRS required urgent attention. If the Fry's policy objectives in Bosnia were successfully to be implemented. Finding the solution required people to act. It required people to lead. It required a person like General Perisic. And he did act. And he acted in a number of ways. He created and maintained strong and reliable lifelines for the VRS. And in so doing, he aided and abetted the crimes committed in Sarajevo and Srebrenica. First, Your Honor, he created two new formations, the 30th and the 40th Personnel Centers. They were formations within the, the VJ General Staff, and they, those formations brought order and stability to the situation of the VJ personnel who were serving in the VRS. Again, Ms. McKenna will make some submissions in respect to the personnel centers. I won't go further. Secondly, to address the critical ammunition and material deficits to the VRS, he, just a minute, Your Honor. Okay, I think I'm solid. Uh, to create those those deficiencies in the ammunition, in the ammunition crisis in the VRS, he requested that the SDC grant him authority to provide the SVK and the VRS with weapons and military equipment on which their war effort depended. The SDC granted him that authority. And you can see that, Your Honors, in Prosecution Exhibit P1009 which is on the monitor. And this is an order of President Lilich on the supplying of 30th and 40th personnel center with weapons and military equipment. There are two parts to this order. The first part is the Yugoslav Army shall supply the 30th and 40th personnel center with weapons and military equipment. Now we know from testimony that the 30th and the 40th personnel centers referred to the VRS and the SVK. Second of all, in this order of President Lilich, the chief of the general staff of the Yugoslav army is hereby authorized to reconcile the requests of the 30th and 40th personnel center with the means of the Yugoslav army and specifically regulate the method and procedures for providing the supplies from item one of that order. 
General Perisic discharged that authority effectively. Without the material assistance Perisic provided from the VJ's reserves, the wars in Bosnia and Croatia could not have been prosecuted, nor could the crimes have been committed. Perisic's contributions had a substantial effect on the commission of crimes in Sarajevo and in Srebrenica. The importance of General Perisic's assistance to the VRS was underscored by defense witness and former RS Minister of Defense, Dusan Kovacevic. He stated, and I quote, and this will, his quotation is appearing before your honors, especially in 1995, more combat material was spent in 1994, especially compared to 1993, because during this period from August 1993, uh, from August 1994 until the end of the war, the biggest combat operations took place. There was Podrinja, Srebrenica, there was the defense of the western municipalities. He goes on, he also affirmed his statement, I'm going back to what I said, August 1994 till the end of the war in 1995, that was the period when the greatest combat operations were carried out with the most resources spent, fuel, victims, and everything else in that period. Now, Mr. Thomas, Your Honor, will make submissions on logistics. I won't address this any further. Thirdly, General Perisic assisted the VRS by ordering VJ Special Unit Corps units to Sarajevo to participate in the siege of Sarajevo. Ms. Carter is going to make submissions on that. I won't go further. The fourth way in which General Perisic assisted and aided and abetted the crimes in Sarajevo and Srebrenica was by perpetuating a, an environment of impunity when General Perisic became the chief of the general staff, he inherited an environment of impunity. Uh, general Perisic had a duty under international law to prevent his subordinates' crimes and to punish them f for their occurrence. His persistent failure to fulfill his duty to uphold military discipline throughout his tenure perpetuated that environment of impunity. The environment perpetuated by General Perisic had a positive impact on the commission of the crimes in Sarajevo and Srebrenica in that it afforded his subordinates serving in the VRS the comfort of knowing that they could be, not be punished, they would not be punished, and so encouraged them to continue committing crimes. Now, General Perisic's remarkable laissez-faire attitude after learning of crimes committed by his subordinates in the VRS is reflected by what he did when Slobodan Milosevic informed him sometime between the 15th and the 20th of July 1995 of the killings in Srebrenica and of Mladic's possible involvement in them. According to General Perisic, quote, when I heard from Milosevic about the terrible crime, believe it or not, since then I did not want to know anything about it. I distanced myself from that because it was unbelievable that something like that happens in the 20th and then the answer's cut off. General Perisic acted like an ostrich, burying his head in the sand in the face of what was the single largest atrocity committed by the VRS in the war. Of course, General Perisic had an opportunity to inquire of General Mladic. If we could go to Prosecution Exhibit 2805, you can see that on the 18th of July, in other words, in the time period when General Perisic learned from Slobodan Milosevic, General Perisic drove to the VRS command center in Han Piesik. He met with General Mladic. 
And if we go to the next exhibit, 2803, he also met with General Guevara, who is the gentleman on the far left of this photograph. In other words, General Mladic, who, who said he didn't want to know anything about it, was meeting with people who were responsible for those crimes. Now, it's worth noting, Your Honors, that five weeks after this rather incredible reaction or, or lack of reaction by General Perisic to the killings in Srebrenica, the Markali market place was shelled on the 28th of August, 1995. It's our position, Your Honor, that this environment of impunity had a substantial effect on the commission of crimes in Sarajevo and Srebrenica. Now, turning to General Perisic's 7-3 responsibility, as we discussed this morning, General Perisic is also charged with criminal responsibility under Article 7-3 of the statute. What we allege is that he was the superior officer to personnel in the personnel centers. I, I'll be making some submissions on that after I finish this presentation and after my colleagues have finished their presentations. General Perisic was aware that his subordinates had committed or were about to commit crimes, and he failed to take the reasonable and necessary measures to prevent them or to punish his subordinates for having done so. Again, as I say, I will make some submissions on Article 7.3 uh, after my colleagues have concluded. But that concludes, Your Honor, my overview. I am prepared to answer any questions you may have. Otherwise, I will turn my the podium over to Ms. McKenna. You, you say you, you will make some submissions on Article 7.3 later? Or? Yes, I will, Your Honor. I intend to. After my colleagues have made their submissions, then I'm going to address. Let, let me put this question, and uh, you, you can either deal with it now, or you can deal with it later, or Madam McKenna can deal with it when she speaks. Would you agree to the proposition that the establishment of the 30th and 40th personnel centers is analogous to a, a re-subordination arrangement? It's actually, a, it's actually a resubordination put on record. Uh, resubordination is a very technical term, I know, in the VJ jargon, in the, in the, in the, the, the lexicon of the armies. I, mm. I don't remember all of the elements, but I would say this, Your Honor, that the people who were in, the, and I'll make these submissions later, the people who were in the personnel centers were VJ personnel. Whether I call it resubordination, transfer, they were VJ soldiers who were operating in Bosnia. Mm. Now, I don't want to characterize it as subordination, resubordination, but they were, our position is they were VJ soldiers. Okay. Um, put aside the word resubordination. If you accept that there were VJ soldiers transferred to another army, would you accept that command and control of them would then go over to the army to which they are subordinated? That transferred or transferred? Your Honor, I'm going to make uh, some submissions on that. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll wait for that. Good. I will look forward to making those submissions, Your Honor. We have just one minute. I would like to just adjust our podium. Thank you. Madam McKenna.